I'm excited. You're excited. Woo. Welcome back to the Old Colony Cast, a podcast about all things Plymouth and surrounding areas. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and that nice comes from my co-host, Hannah. Hi. And uh, I'm Andy, your other host. And... Our not so nice producer, Fish. We need to think of a you better guys have been name. Real Wait, mean to I have I been real mean to you? I, you guys have been real mean to me for like. Me? I, I mean, I'm always okay, mean to you. Okay, mostly Andy, but like but Hannah's not helping. It's been like, <laughs> for our listeners. Don't pull me down. <laughs> it's yeah. been. How dare you be you mean to Fish? Ins- That's my job. I'm, I'm just saying, for our listeners, you guys have been like mean to me for literally months. I've been passive. Why months. Why were Passively you mean. To- mean. I, I mean, do actually want to fix his name for today because I think he's the only one that can contribute to what we're talking about technically. That's concerning because oh. I don't know what we're talking about. Is it, is, is it about something that swims in the ocean? No. Is it about... Is it about grocery stores? It's it, about something you it, used to Is it about to Star do. Trek? Oh god, is this a Duck and Donuts? Did you... <laughs> oh! I'm sorry. Did you buy Munchkins this morning as research? Now I get it. So our Munchkin producer... Fish. I have not Munchkin produced in Wait, years. Because I did ask you this question: What did they call Dunkin' Donuts employees? It wasn't a barista. It wasn't anything. It was just I like it was crew just a member. Crew member at that point. Crew member. Crew member fish. I think it still is crew member. I have no idea. I haven't worked there. God, I hate that kind of. Just call me an employee. Like, what's wrong crew with that? Crew member's fine. <sighs> it's fine, I guess. I mean, I was a shift leader at one point, but that's mainly because I forgot my name tag and had to steal another one. Do you know what's ironic? Is I'm like, yeah, don't make up a silly name. And we're like, ooh, we're going to hire people and call them art tenders. So what? I'm a hypocrite. I get it. Go yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about Dunkin' Donuts. All right. So I'm assuming that's what we're getting at, right? <laughs> yes. All right. We are going to talk about Dunkin' Donuts. I did bring in Munchkins to be on topic. I thought you were just being super nice. Well, I knew we were going to be here for a while, too. <laughs> All right. So like, that's actually a pretty good pretty That's good a good snack. idea. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Dual purpose. So, um, now I want to clarify something because an episode with Dunkin' Donuts, I think, can go in a couple directions. Okay. This is more of a love note for Dunkin' Donuts. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. Okay. I would like to point out that you've asked me to contribute and then immediately said I can't. I know. (laughs) (laughs) Listeners, the smile on her face. Patronizing fish. Is the <laughs> See, this is what brings joy I, to my heart. <laughs> See, I said she was being mean, and now she feels like she has to. Yeah, it's great. So, um, no, I just feel like you might have some insight on certain things that maybe I didn't realize. Because I, I don't know. I feel like I worked at Wendy's and I learned a lot about Dave in that, like my onboarding session. Oh, really? There. Yeah. Okay. Right. You know what I mean? So he might have something. Locked away. Oh God! You think I was trained from your time? There? <laughs> I don't know. They called me into work on my second day ever. Nice. Huh? Can't say I haven't pulled that one. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna lie. Hey, sometimes you need somebody. Just seem just go, go off how they did their first yeah. day. And Are you a human? It. Great, come in. Yeah. yeah. Like, is he human? Does he live less than a mile away? Cool. Yeah. So it begins with our Lord and Savior, William Rosenberg. Um. <laughs> sure. Yeah. No, just a guy, William Rosenberg or Bill Rosenberg, born 1916 in Dorchester. Um, he dropped out of school in the eighth grade to help with his family during the Great Depression. He found work at the racetracks in New Hampshire. Didn't specify what racetracks. Okay. I'm assuming they say New Hampshire because there must have been something about gambling in Massachusetts still at that time. Well, I was, isn't there like a speedway in New Hampshire? Like, I'm thinking you motor thinking racetracks. That? That's what I was thinking. Oh. Yeah, there, yeah, there is. That makes way more sense. I was like horses. Duh. Yeah. It's 1916. Though, how many cars are they flying around? During the, I don't know. I have no idea. It Let's wasn't <laughs> a NASCAR. I mean, I bet you NASCAR was probably. <laughs> like, they're like, hey, we have this thing with four wheels. They're like, let's race it. Yeah. Because, uh, come on. I would. I wanted to race wheelchairs one time. So you say that one time and not like well, I don't have access to him anymore. Yeah, he'd he'd, uh, he'd bring a block of ice and sell ice chips there. Made a pretty penny um, for the time. Bill also worked delivering telegrams for Western Union Bank at age fourteen, and then at age seventeen he became an ice cream truck driver, and he ended up moving up to management by the time he was twenty. Of the ice cream truck? Of the ice cream trucks. Oh, of all the trucks. I would think it was like a little 
I feel like that's like a really patronizing promotion where you're the ice cream truck driver and you're like, I demand more than like, we call you manager of that ice cream truck, yeah. buddy. Yeah, right. During World War II, he worked at a shipyard um, and kind of noticed that there was a lack of... That would probably be Quincy, I would assume. Yes. Yeah. Lack of uh, options for lunch available to mm-hmm. the people who work there, whether it be distance or just like meal options, quick on the go things. So he borrowed $1,000 and had already $1,500 in pocket to start industrial luncheon services. And this was a food truck. Oh, didn't they do work on Star Wars? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. I was like, what a name, huh? Mm. Um, they sold coffee, donut sandwiches, <laughs> just like miscellaneous snack items and things like that off the truck, most likely in the sh- shipyard area yeah. that he worked at. So he went from the shipyard right to that. Uh, oh, was this a, like a, a food truck type thing? Like yeah, a food r- truck. Road coach? Mm-hmm. And... He had experience managing the ice cream trucks, so yeah. he, he knew how to ma- he knew how to work a truck. Uh, he noticed most of his sales were coming from coffee and donuts, so he thought, "I need to do this on every corner yeah. in the entire state." <laughs> 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 no, he thought he'd make a location based off that. So he built what was known as Open Kettle, which is a diner esque type of thing in Quincy on 543 Southern Artery, and they sold just coffee and donuts. Um, the name ended up changing to Dunkin' Donuts just a couple of years later, in 1950. So, that is the very first Dunkin' Donuts that is still there to this day. That was, that was going to be my next question, is it still there? Yes. I have not been inside it, but I got a pretty good description. Field trip. Of, I know. I've driven by it. It's very cool. I'm sure I've driven by it. I just... It's retro looking. Is it? Yeah, they kept like the retro feel. So it has fancy like neon Dunkin' Donuts sign. And then I guess on the inside it still has like, they said it still had the pink and like orange whatever stools. and. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm like. Dunkin' Donuts has like really changed. St- st- yeah, it has, but there's still pink and orange all over yeah. the place. Anyway, no matter how like modern it looks. Right. Those colors are pretty. Just branded, ev- yeah, everlasting, yeah. yeah. Um, and really, is a it's just it's still a testament to the beauty of Dunkin' Donuts because they kept so many of the original things and or at least tried to preserve it or recreate what, how it looked before. Coffee was sold for ten cents, donuts for a nickel. Fifteen cent breakfast. There you go, In and Out. No, In and Out's on the other coast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he ended up opening more locations nearby, just like a handful, and he got the idea from an ice cream franchise at the time to start franchising Dunkin' Donuts. So yep. that's exactly what he did. The first one opened in 1955 in Dedham. Okay. It had 52 flavors of donuts, so enough to give them a flavor of the week every week. Okay. All yeah. right. Um, 1963, they opened their 100th location. Wow. And also switched over... CEO ownership to his son, um, Robert. So Bill Rosenberg either retired or... No, it's Bob Rosenberg. Yes. Or then. And then yeah, he took over at the age of 25. Wow. Which is very young. But he had just, I don't want to say just, but probably just graduated from Harvard Business School. Yeah. So at least within the couple, a couple he, of years. Yeah, yeah. He would have been young to... Honestly, finished graduating then too. I know. What are you usually like? Twenty one, twenty two when you graduate you figure college. Figure it's eighteen. It's usually four years. Bachelor's. 22. Yeah. So he could have gotten like a master's and yeah. you know, or just done like a couple of years and like yeah, you're gonna take over. We got to give you a little, you know, a Street couple of years, cra- a couple of years of drive through window before we yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Robert remained CEO uh, until 1999. Oh, I almost forgot. By 1979, they had 1,000 locations, primarily in the New England area. Massachusetts, New England area. It feels like a million. Yes. Um, he was there till 1999. Saw many changes and updates, expansions in the time that he was CEO. That's not new for any business that exists within that strain of time, though. From 1960 to 1999, we, it was like a... World changed a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Technology, everything. Breakfast sandwiches. Yes. <laughs> everything changed, so... Not going to say he, like, boosted the thing into, boosted the business into the 21st century. That's what most businesses do that have lasted a long time. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) 
In the U.S., there's currently 9,538 locations. I hate to backtrack. What year did you say the first one opened? I'm I'm kind of now like I'm like oh is it a hundred years? That... I think 1948. Oh okay, we got some time. Yeah. Um, it was called Dunkin' Donuts in 1950 though. Okay. So, uh, throughout the world, there's 12,871. So it's a global, mm-hmm. a global business. Um, it's in 45 states. Wow, that surprises me that they're not in all 50. So I have the ones that don't. Montana? Yep. Wyoming? Nope, there's one. There's a couple in Wyoming. Alaska? Nope, they're in Alaska. The Dakotas? The Dakotas. Both the Dakotas, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, and the Dakotas. Montana's the easy one just because there's not enough people (laughs) to sell donuts to. (laughs) Well, I would argue Wyoming is the same. Well, that's. See, I'm more caught up in Oregon. That's like. Surprising, yeah, in a way. Although I suppose it's wait, isn't that no? That's Seattle. No, that's I, I, I did the yeah. same thing, and it's like yeah, but they're in Washington. Yeah, yeah, no, no Washington. Weird. Oh, Washington's on the list too. No Washington. Oh, they're not in Washington. No, that's Starbucks country. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's probably like Oregon too. I would think. Yeah, yeah. So um, currently, after many buy-ins, buyouts, Baskin Robbins being the most prominent. Like, oh yeah, they combined yep. forces. Mm-hmm. Um, it is under most recent ownership is Inspire Brands as of December fifteenth, twenty twenty, and that is also when they decided to rename it to Dunkin' rather yep. than Dunkin' Donuts. There is probably like several, like big, either Dunkin' Donuts absorbing another one or someone else absorbing Dunkin' Donuts yep. and back and forth. That I didn't feel like listening to them all. But, <laughs> but there's a lot of them. <laughs> there was a lot. Baskin Robbins was the one that stood out to me um, because I thought it was so weird at the time that. But it had like beginnings in ice cream, which is weird. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, so almost like, like okay. a full, full circle kind of thing. But like you'd walk into some Dunkin' Donuts and you'd be like, "Is do people work over on the ice cream side? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah. I'd be so confused. I'm like, Are, am I allowed to order ice cream from you? Yeah. Do you guys, that, is that real? Like, I never saw anyone order ice cream. Did you work at one that had Baskin Robbins? Yes. There was Baskin Robbins there, too? Uh, f- for a, f- Ooh, I'd say about a year or two, huh. they decided to put a Baskin Robbins into only the one that I worked at and had us all cross trained. Oh. It didn't do super well because it's one of those things where. We're f- we were far enough out of like downtown that it's kind of a weird place for an ice cream shop. Yeah, like you weren't getting any foot traffic. It was heading down from the center of Bridgewater down towards the middle of our rotary. So it's yeah, like so it's a drive-through coffee place, not like a destination ice cream place. Yeah, yeah. It it was in the you know official New England strip mall trifecta of pizza place. There's Dry cleaner, Dunkin' Donuts. There too. It, it's on the other side of the center. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there was one that was the 44 Dunkin' Donuts, the standalone Dunkin' Donuts, not any of them that are in the gas stations. Yeah. I'm saying 44. Sorry. The old 44. Samoset Street. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, when you say the 44 Dunkin' Donuts, I'm thinking of the one that's yeah. in the middle bar rotary. Yeah. No, sorry. I knew who I looked, I looked at. <laughs> both of your Please faces. Please remember that we're not old Plymouth yeah. counties. Yeah. So, Sam and Set Street okay. used to be called 44. Okay. That's it. No. Now, some people call it the old 44. Yeah, I know. We've yeah. pretty much all switched over to Sam and Set Street, though. Yeah. So, it's a standalone one that's over there that has a huge drive through line. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it, it's next to the mobile, or yep. what used to be the... I don't know if mobile's still there, but Dunk, um, Burger King's gone. So there was a Baskin-Robbins there. I had a couple friends who worked at that one, and I l- literally never saw anyone eating ice cream. They had a full ice cream bar. Yep. And just... Yeah. Nothing. I don't... I, I, I mean, knew Baskin-Robbins was, like, part of it, but I've never, ever been like, like we hey, sold, I want to get ice cream, let's go to Dunkin' Donuts. I mean, we sold some... We snacked on a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like, as it turns out, giving a bunch of teenagers 
like access to ice cream? Low low supervision and unlimited sampling spoons. It didn't go well. Makes sense. I mean, this was a job that at one point I made somebody a birthday cake by taking one of the wax papers. Yeah. Rolling it up, putting it in a donut, and then lighting it in the toaster. Yeah. That sounds good. I somehow never got fired from that job. There you go. You just showed up. <laughs> you were there. I was moderately confident and willing to show up to work. You were yeah. there when it counted. So yep. that's kind of like the history of Dunkin' Donuts where we are today. Yep. Obviously, uh, they're on every single corner in Massachusetts. You go to like a parking lot and you go to a Dunkin' Donuts and you look across at the other side of the parking lot. And there's and, a Dunkin' Donuts. And there's a Dunkin' Donuts, yeah. yeah. So it's no news for us. It it runs in our veins. Do you guys like Dunkin' Donuts? Are you completely over it, Fish? This is where I admit I don't like coffee. That's okay. I, don't I drink never coffee. like coffee. Yeah. You don't I drink also, coffee either? I don't drink coffee. Yeah. See, my <sighs> problem is I don't like coffee and I don't like breakfast sandwiches oh yeah see i love breakfast sandwiches yeah how do you think how do you like the dunkin donuts ones they have evolved over time They've, yeah they do. some of them are pretty good um but then i started making my own at home yeah and now i think everyone's is trash oh, yeah. <laughs> it's still fast food yeah, yeah. yeah. but I, mean, I do i do remember when it was it's interesting to see like how they've changed because i remember when they first rolled it out it was like a breakfast croissant sandwich. Like yeah. it was very specific. Yeah. And you couldn't order them through the drive through. You had to go inside yeah. and get them because it was like like crack the egg. Like it was time consuming in That's a funny. Okay, fast this food is before my time. Yeah, in a fast food standpoint. We did not have eggs. Uh, well now it's like our eggs came in frozen and yeah. disc shaped. Yeah. yeah. Which is I'm sure what they are now. I'd so. assume. Um I think my biggest gripe is their inconsistency. Because hey, of being franchises, it's, it's like... It's part of what you love about it, It's too. a crapshoot. Yeah. But... Because I definitely got served a... Not overdone, a burnt breakfast sandwich. Yeah. Like, it was literally like, just get the guy out of the window. Kind of... <laughs> well, I mean, we're timed in... Yeah. At one point, we did have our franchisee's wife, who... Basically, the way it was set up is they had their office in, like, a building slightly off to the side. Yeah. And she would call if the drive-thru was going too slow. Oh, that's rough. Yeah, we at one point had a car order, pull halfway up, stop, and then she called to ask why the car had stopped. Oh. Because somehow I'm going to know that from the drive-thru window. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Probably look for his wallet. Or literally anything. Just yeah. why did she stop? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Like, you are closer. You could go out and ask. Well, I uh, I, I just get it. If I literally live, like, two seconds away from... Like, if well, I'm going anywhere, I'm pretty much, like, almost driving through one. Yeah. Yeah, that's called living in Massachusetts. No, 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 no. You don't get it. <laughs> My neighborhood, it's, it's miles of houses, right? Yeah. There's, like, one road, one road in, one road out. For some reason, in the middle of my neighborhood, there's a Dunkin's. There's a Dunkin' Donuts. If you drive through that neighborhood, that and you've never been there before, there's like a and it's attached to a convenience store. You'd be like, what? Because <laughs> it's just homes. It's homes on homes. On, it's a very like crowded neighborhood. Yeah. Some parts are a little bit more spread out. The new, the more newly developed ones, but it's like a pond. And association, then just a, a random Dunkins. Yes. Yeah. To say that it's like the most New England thing you could run into would be like an understatement. It's random as hell. Like I get that they're on every street corner. This is truly in my way as I'm leaving my neighborhood. So I get it all the time still because I, I I, I just don't have a choice. Literally gotten off a highway before either because I wanted something to drink or to eat or to use the bathroom and been irate. Been like, I've driven four miles. I don't see a Dunkin' Donuts. What is going on? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then went, so me and Donnie have driven around the country, across the country, through all of the states that didn't have Dunkin' Donuts. And let me tell you, the second we were on a highway, if we hadn't seen one in like a day or two, if yeah. we saw one, we didn't, didn't matter what we were trying to show up to on time. You'd stop. Oh, 100%. We we're like, oh, yes, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, get in and try and like get to the Dunkin' Donuts. But because people do love their coffee, yeah. I mean, 
Uh, you got to find what works. I, you're totally right. I feel like sometimes it's, you don't get the same thing every time you go there. Yeah. That's what part no, of yeah, what absolutely. makes it fun. <laughs> it's, it's my love note for it, okay? okay. No, I'm... <laughs> Still, if I'm getting a breakfast sandwich on the go, I yeah. go through Dunkin' Donuts. I know. I get an egg and cheese on a croissant. It's pretty good. I usually do sausage, egg, and cheese on an English muffin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's good. So, so we need to talk about some... Uh, Really influential times in Dunkin' Donuts history. Okay. Time to make the donuts. Oh, yeah. I still say that. Yeah. Like, as I'll, I'll be leaving, I'll be like, it's time to make the donuts. And that's it. And if people don't understand that, like, that's... So, he was Fred. Yep. Uh, I literally thought, like, he was the guy who made Dunk... Who was, like, he created Dunkin' Donuts when I was... Old. I didn't had no idea that he was an actor. <laughs> because... <laughs> because we had people like the Jordan... Jordan's Furniture guys who were the actual oh, yeah, owners yeah. or yeah. Dave from Wendy's yeah. yeah like I was like yeah that's him yeah that, yeah, that's Mr. Duncan yeah <laughs> <laughs> literally so um, and, he, and like Jordan's, Jordan's Furniture was local on the yep. same level sure. so I was like yeah that's him that's the owner stepping up being in the commercials no he was an actor uh, named Michael Vale and he was actually a pretty serious actor who was in like Broadway plays and stuff. Really? Yeah. Maybe not like first roles of anything, yeah, yeah. but like he was in he was in stuff. He was in stuff. And um he played Fred from Dunkin' Donuts from nineteen eighty two to nineteen ninety seven. It was uh, long that was, campaign went on forever. Over three hundred actors auditioned and Vale stood out among all of them, coming in with his little mustache. This is a tired, disheartened yeah. worker. Time, time to make the donuts. <laughs> that feels yeah. appropriate. Yeah. But if you remember in the later years when Dunkin' Donuts started changing their menu, the ads with him in it became far more. Time to make the donuts was almost gone. He yeah. was in culotta commercials on the was beach. He? Yeah, oh, like at like that. beach parties and like he'd be like dancing with culottas and like girls. I don't recall and that. And girls at all. on the beach. Yeah. Good for him. <laughs> <laughs> so it did change over time. Yeah. He, he was still the guy. Um. Ti- the phrase "time to make the donuts" was the title of William Rosenberg's autobiography, the of C- course. original CEO. Yep. Um, 1997, when the brand wanted to rethink that campaign and maybe retire it, they actually surveyed customers because everyone loved him. Yeah. So they re- surveyed customers to see how they would feel, and they thought it was only right that he got like an actual retirement. So I, I'm quoting that they staged a retirement. But this all really happened. Okay. There was a parade in Boston for it. Okay. And then they gave away six million donuts over the time for in honor of his retirement. Damn. Um, and then he was also mentioned, like, him being a character was mentioned in other ads from other people who, like, were retiring, too, or, like, or giving him advice. Like, really? Yeah, so oh, like other funny. local, like I think they mentioned like Bob Hope was like, "Good luck, Fred." Here's oh. what like here's what retirement looks like, and like things like that. So other other companies played up Fred the, retiring. Yeah, huh? Isn't that it's funny? Interesting. Uh, vale was awarded Dunkin' Donuts ambassador, which just meant he represented the brand at charity events. Oh, okay. Yeah, until That's cool. he passed away in 2005 at the age of 83. Um. And there's been, like, a couple other things that have happened with Dunkin' Donuts since then. Nothing quite as... Influential as yes. time to make the donuts? Yes. It was iconic. And still is. I don't yeah. know how many, like, people my age still remember it. Like, I might be at, like, the tip of y- people. You are who, kind the, of at the edge That was, of that. like, the yeah. golden age of that kind of commercial. It was I don't yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. I don't feel like... time to make the donut. There was, was where's, where's the, the beef. beef. Yeah. yeah. Um, there was a whole video uh, VHS game called Commercial Crazies. Yeah. And there was a guy that spoke wicked fast. Yes. Yeah, there was a bunch of them. Oh, my God, yeah. He would give, like, the... Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, but since then, like, I don't think anything quite as influential as... No, Fred America Runs on Dunkin' yes. just doesn't have that... That was my next thing. ...catch. Because it doesn't have a personality behind it. No. Nope. Right. And, uh, yeah, they don't have... There's no more like it people for brands. Yeah, there was. Uh, it's all. What well, was the other one? Was it Joe Azusa? Joe Azuzu? Yeah, it was. Jo- yeah. Joe Azuzu. Yeah. yeah. 
But yeah, like they switched from that kind of character. Right. Now if there's anyone brand it's associated celebrity, with celebrities. It's celebrity yeah. endorsements now. Yes. So instead of like finding an actor and making them the face, they get someone who's already famous. Right. Um, and there'll but never be another Fred. I just like that stage retirement party too. I'm like, no, that if you're throwing a parade in Boston, that's a real That's a big deal. It's yeah. a yeah, yeah. That's there's a lot of <laughs> for someone that puts on events. Um, like I, if anyone was like, Do you want to do something in Boston? I'd be like, No. <laughs> I don't so, want to do that. Uh, not notable to their marketing, but to their uh, global, I don't know, standing. They ended styrofoam cups a couple years ago. Okay. Yep. I don't know if you noticed. I don't drink coffee, so. There you go. Well, no one's walking around with Dunkin' Donuts styrofoam cups anymore. They nope. used to put iced coffees in them. Oh, Really? They Hot would cup. give you the iced coffee in the plastic cup and then put the oh, plastic cup right, in the right, 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 yeah. right, right. insulator. Yep. And then not everyone did that. And then I remember and being in high used, school. People used to have to ask yeah. or occasionally get charged Can I get more. a hot cup? Can you give me that in a hot cup? Yeah. Yeah, you'd ask. I and do then remember. Just like so it, yeah, 10 cents. Insulated. Yeah. And it wouldn't like drip. Yeah. The condensation. So that's long been gone, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, plenty of other things have happened. They have an app. You can get Dunkin' Donuts points sometimes on there. They offer really fun things for people who have their point system. Hannah's so excited right There's now. No, like they had like. Yeah, a, they can play Dunkin' Donuts Go. You walk around and <laughs> catch half donuts, donuts on the street. <laughs> oh my gosh. That would be so funny. <laughs> Um, they have I don't know their seasonal things that come back all the time that people love like that people wait for like yeah. every pumpkin spice or February's chocolate lovers month so they do like their their uh, what are those called the brownie batter donuts and uh-huh. like things like that so they're still like a huge donut company right even with all like the drink yeah. oh yeah drink I mean, influential things I'll, I admit that I still enjoy a good colada from now every once in a while do they still make colada I assume so they might call them like frozen coffees now or something. Yeah, I think the they co- still have not the coffee actually, ones, like the fruit ones. I actually oh. worked on a Dunkin' Donuts advertising campaign for a hot second. Really? Yeah, I can't remember what it was for. Something where you put like sh- shots of some flavor mm-hmm. into something else. I don't remember. It was like right when I first moved to Plymouth. It was like a decade ago. I remember when Culottes came out, and I literally like lost my mind. It's all I wanted, all the time. If <laughs> if I saw a Dunkin' Donuts, I would ask to get a culotta. Like, just driving by one. So it happened yeah, a yeah. lot. <laughs> I loved them. So it would happen four times every trip. Oh, my yeah. gosh. And they were pretty good. I think it would get, like, the strawberry and there was, some, like, the mango orange one. I was like the lemonade. Yeah. The lemonade was good. And then they had the kids' chocolata, which was, like, a frozen hot chocolate. And then that just became frozen hot chocolate, like, became a thing at one point. Yeah. And then there's... I realize the- I... Do not. I don't remember that. I think I, that I, I, I do not take in the full experience of Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, because I'm like, I'm sure I've had a culotta. Yeah, frozen the amount hot of chocolate. I've, I've given no this idea. place. Like yeah. I am, I, if I am a victim. Oh, uh, they're not a sponsor, Donuts. but they can be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah look, I just <laughs> winked at the microphone. <laughs> I just remember having to clean the culotta machine every once, every cup, every basically every day. Yeah. Like, drain the thing, take the whole thing apart. I used to have to do it at Wendy's with the frosty machine. Yeah, it's not fun. You like, yeah, you let it drain out, like, into a bucket. You put the solution in. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've, oh, no, we had to, like, take the whole thing apart. I've done it, but for frozen cocktail machines. There yeah. you go. A little different. Um, uh, less different than you'd think. Also. No, because you get to drink a little frozen cocktail while you're doing it. <laughs> I forgot, because these are in front of us. Munchkins is a Dunkin' Donuts thing. Everywhere else, they're donut holes. Yep. Or in Canada, Timbits. That's just too much. They're asking a lot. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> They're asking a lot just then. Uh, and then any country that Dunkin' Donuts is in specializes in their own influence, like what will sell in that area. So sure. Yeah. If you go to Japan, Dunkin' Donuts there has like Pokemon donuts. Yeah. Some sort of cultural yeah. seaweed donut or something. I don't know, but they have the Pokemon donuts are really cool. They have yeah. a Chansey donut. 
Chansey Town? Yes. I don't know what that is. Okay, never mind. Right. Sorry, I don't think Andy was really big on Pokemon. <laughs> so the the my my Dunkin' Donuts experience, I just now realizing when I was at Home Depot, I had a team and we had a card that was loaded with funds monthly where you're supposed to treat your team yeah, as like yeah, morale yeah. builders. But they'd only give you like three dollars per person per month. Yeah. So you're like, all right, we're getting Dunkin' Donuts. Who wants what for coffee? Right. And it was always like you ruined the person's day <laughs> walking up with a list of I need one like yeah, this, I yeah, need yeah. one like this, I need one like this. And I want yeah. But they've yeah, it's everywhere Dunkin' Donuts is especially around here. When you look at the map that's on like the Dunkin' Donuts dot It's basically a solid blob. Yes. Yeah. yeah. In Massachusetts, New England for sure. And then it does get pretty sporadic the more you get you yeah, know, I mean, out into the country. But your Bridgewater's got and then you like you got to count the ones at gas stations. I mean, there's like there was a while there were probably like, six for, like within a five minute ride of where yeah, we are right now. There's yeah. there was for a while that anywhere on Route Three in Plymouth. So you yeah. know how long Route Three in Plymouth is? Yeah, yeah. It's a long, that's a very long route. Yeah. None of them had drive-throughs. At one point, none of them had drive-throughs. And then you have some that are like express ones where you're like, oh, I'll take a breakfast sandwich. And they're like, we don't do breakfast yeah. sandwiches. Yeah. You're like, and no. I don't, and I don't drink co- So this is my personal pet peeve. I don't drink coffee. Yeah. It's all or a Diet Coke. And they're always like, do you want ice? Because it's warm. Yeah. And I'd be like, the other half of this store is a convenience store. How is your soda warm? Oh my gosh. That's so funny. Yeah. It's frustrating. But yeah they're literally everywhere now I will there's two with uh, drive throughs on Route 3 now so yeah. one in North Plymouth one in Manamet Route 3A 3A thank yeah. you sorry yeah three's like a real highway yeah well, there's yeah. plenty of them off that <laughs> <laughs> plenty of them yeah. with drive throughs plenty of them without until you have to go pee real bad yeah <laughs> oh and their headquarters are in Canton you can see it when you're like on the highway oh yeah yeah, yeah. Huh. that literally is like Dunkin Donuts headquarters like if you were going to Dedham or wherever in that area. Mm-hmm. Bear left at the split. So, uh, Dunkin' Donuts, you want to sponsor us? Hit us up. <laughs> you can email us. I'll call any cast, gmail.com. But I think this part where we stop talking. They're going to be like, take that episode down. <laughs> <laughs> And thanks for checking out the show today, listeners. Uh, if you enjoyed the content today, you can go over to patreon.com slash inebriart to support the show. You can join over there for just a few dollars a month and help us provide this fun content that you just checked out. You can also email us at inebriart.com with your questions, complaints, and concerns, or you can find us on all social medias at inebriart or at inebriart6 on Instagram. And also don't forget to check out our other shows, Bar Talk Podcast, Old Colony Cast, Inebriart, and all the other shows on the Inebriart Network, which you can find at inebriart.com. Thanks again for listening.